your um, technical um, education on AI. And I say technical, but honestly, AI is not supposed to be technical. It's supposed to be easy for you to use so that you're not having to be technical. Okay. And so uh, keep that in mind as we go forward. Um, so if you're here, first time here with me, can you just put in the chat, this is your first time here with me, put a one in the chat. If this is not the first time, put a zero. Right. One in the chat, if you've been with me before. Zero, if you've not. Great, we, we got some uh, repeat people here. Super great. Excuse me. Thank you guys for coming back. Uh, not a problem, not a problem, Thomas. Uh, Andy, Andy, how are you? Andy is uh, an amazing, amazing uh, team leader here in Southern California in the Inland Empire. Um, so uh, we got some great company here with you guys. All right, so thank you so much. Um, all right, so some of you have not been with me. So um, if you've not been with me before, I'll give you a quick rundown. Uh, my name is Leo Chen, and um, why am I here? I am here because um, number one, first of all, I want to uh, share all the knowledge and everything around AI, one of the things I'm very passionate about, and for a good reason. Um, I have worked in, uh, in the tech world for over 15 plus years. I wanna say 17, but it's just easier to say 15 because it's over a decade and a half. Um, I worked for a very successful um, startup that did very, very well over the, uh, the decades from the 2000s and on. I was the director of IT, so I handled everything uh, that was uh, in our agency of, um, by the time I was leaving, probably over 100 employees, which is very large for an agency. Uh, we we're full service and we only work with Fortune 500 and above companies. So that means that uh, companies that have 10, 20, $30 million worth of marketing budget for us as an agency to build out uh, projects for them. And a lot of those projects include uh, building uh, websites from scratch, corporate websites, corporate campaigns, corporate um, uh, ad campaigns um, for all of their marketings, including all their branding and everything. Um, and toward the later years, of course, we built out a film production company because video was getting really, really big. And so I've had a hand in every single one of those process and um, departments because I was a director of IT and everybody needed everything to work. And on top of all that, if that wasn't enough, um, I also... Um, built and deployed uh, multi-site data centers where we uh, housed 24 seven um, functioning websites for all of our high profile clients. Now, these are all uh, clients that are uh, household names. Uh, you think about your uh, Intel, the chip company, uh, Hewlett Packard for decade uh, plus, uh, Kawasaki, the motorcycle or vehicle companies um, uh, work for all the different, not only North America, but for also Japan and South America and Europe. Um, so some really, really fun projects on the corporate side. Um, but uh, I've had my share of challenges and also a lot of testing around all the stuff that um, is very, very critical. So that's my tech background. And uh, my real estate background, you might be wondering, like, why is Leo here? And you know, Real Academy. Well, um, I've been in real estate almost about 10 years uh, since I left the tech world. And so um, I know all of the stuff that you guys have to go through every single day in the trenches, talking, talking to clients, generating leads, doing events and all the, I, I mean, if I had to sit here and write out all the things, it's probably like 50 hats you have to wear <laughs> just to do your business. So we totally understand that. And so I have that perspective and I'm still in production today. Uh, even though I run a uh, systems agency right now, but I also have a small team where I do a lot of uh, real estate transactions as well. My agency is called Systemology. And so that kind of marries my real estate world with my tech world and be able to help people uh, streamline all their processes and all their tech stack and all the systems and things like that. And um, one of the biggest things that we do is uh, building CRMs for agents and teams so that it can be completely functional. That way you can just uh, work your pipeline on an everyday basis and be able to uh, generate more revenue and grow as a real estate business, a real estate sales business yourself. Uh, we also build uh, agent websites and team websites and do custom automations. So I've said a lot there. Um, 
Uh, so uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, if you guys have any questions about me, of course, uh, feel free to put it in chat. Feel free to unmute. This is a open discussion. Uh, we're all friends and family here in the real, uh, real, uh, real brokerage and real academy world. So uh, anything that comes to mind, I'm happy to uh, be able to converse about it and uh, talk about it. Okay, so uh, that's the intro there. So. Um, uh, the only thing that you should take away is that I was in the tech world for a long time. I do real estate in sales, so I know your world. And then um, uh, the one thing maybe I didn't mention is that uh, luckily for me, um, Sharon lives here in my area here in Southern California. And I had uh, luckily was able to meet him about seven years ago now. And so since, that, since the day I met him, um, I've been very happy to uh, be able to mastermind around all of the great ideas and playbooks and how to actually run a joyful uh, real estate business. And so uh, between those three areas of my experience, um, I'm here to, you know, just be able to share anything that I've learned and also, um, you know, mastermind with you guys around anything that you guys might be struggling with. All right. So all good. If that all is good and uh, you think my intro was good, could you put, please put me, put a, uh, yes in the chat for me so that I know that we are all here together. Thank you so much, Marcel. Mandy, thank you. Great, great. All right, I'm, I'm going to make sure that you guys acknowledge before I'm going to give you the agenda for today. So give me a yes in the chat if you want the agenda. Good, thank you. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. All right. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here and uh, you guys can get an overview of what we're going to do today. All right, so this is, uh, you guys can all see my screen. Yes, good, thank you. I see some nodding heads, great, perfect. I'm trying to open up the chat here so I'll make sure that if anybody asks anything that I can see it. All right, this is our agenda today, okay? So you guys might be wondering like, hey, I hear in the news, I hear all around, maybe you get some emails and stuff like that and you hear from your friends like all the AI stuff and it's just too much. Really, it's just too much. So where, where, would, I, where, would, where would I actually get the real AI news without any opinions on it or anything like that? but just give me what I need to know, okay? Where, can, can you guys put in the chat, just curi out of curiosity, where do you get your AI news? Is it from friends? Is it from news outlets or major news outlets? Is it from emails? Like, How do you guys learn about AI? Just put whatever in the chat or feel free to unmute if it's something. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. <laughs> I appreciate that. Friends, good, great, great, Tracy. Friends, who else? What else we got here? Thomas, I know you get your AI news somewhere. Where, where would you get your AI news from, usually? Friends in the internet, Zoom user. It's a great name. <laughs> Friends in the internet, great, okay. All right, so I'm going to share you one source and one page and one page only where you should get your news so that you are not just jumping around everywhere and be worried about like, are you falling behind or anything like that? So that's what I'm gonna do, okay? Secondly, I'm gonna share with you what's the latest in ChatGPT. Uh, and just so that I can uh, see where you guys are at with everything. Matt Wolf, thank you so much, Ryan, awesome. Um, uh, are you guys all using ChatGPT? Do you guys all have at least a free account? Give me a one if you have a free account that you have or interact with it, you've used it before. I wanna see if we have like any absolute like newbies here, which I hope not because you're all here. All ones, super great. Okay, so um, you might hear on the news of some of the latest in ChatGPT and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna you know, show you what it is and I'm gonna dig in a little bit deeper. All right, so that's number two. Number three, how do we, I want to show you guys how I, you know, as a, as a tactical example, how do I write my weekly real estate market update emails fast? Okay, with the assistance of AI. Okay, do you guys all write 
um, you know, weekly uh, real estate market uh, update emails for your, all of your uh, SOIs and all your database. Um, and it's okay if you don't. Okay, this is one of the things that we do in our agencies is, is allow systems and build and create systems for you guys to be able to do that. But I at least want to show you how you would be able to write emails quickly, even if you wrote it to and send it to 10 people. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how I do that using AI. And then um, we all get MLS monthly stats. Um, we, we can get, you know, direct stats uh, uh, to the day stats from our MLS um, if you pull up your search and stuff like that and start counting all the numbers. But I want to give you guys an easy way to be able to just recap the monthly uh, market stats uh, from your association, from your MLS or something like that. Okay. And then I want to give you an easy way to be able to sift through all the mortgage rates so that you don't have to manually type everything in and create uh, a mortgage rates uh, uh market update with it, okay? The market update email consists of two parts. Part number one is how are the interest rates trending? And part number two, how are the monthly local market pricings uh, is trending? Okay, not only pricings, but it, it could also be, you know, how many uh, days on market and stuff like that. But consumers, uh, your clients, your prospect, they only want those two things, and they want them easy and fast. They do not want five pages or three pages or even two pages worth of data, okay? So we're gonna do uh, an email that's gonna be uh, very easy for them to read so that they can stay nurtured with you guys uh, because when you write too much or you give a lot of mumbo jumbo, they get turned off and they don't wanna read your email anymore and they wanna unsubscribe, so we don't want that. Okay, and then number six, uh, you guys all know about the deal of the week email. You've guys written a deal of the week email. Just give me a D in the chat if you do a deal of the week email. Regularly or not regularly, doesn't matter. Okay, Nikita does. Okay, so Mandy does. Okay, deal of the week emails. Um, I'm going to show you a fast way using AI to be able to create that email. Okay, without you guys having to manually type every single thing in into the email and have a, reg, uh, a regular templated uh, deal of the week email that you can also modify. Okay, so number seven, uh, jumping off from that, is that uh, I'm gonna show you guys a way where we have, we all write contracts here, okay? And I don't know about you guys, we're in California here, so Andy knows every single agreement of some sort is like 30 plus pages at least. <laughs> okay, how do I actually search in the documents and get exactly what I need securely? The key here, here, the key here is securely. You don't want your client's data and information, all that stuff out on ChatGPT that they use it to store in their trillions of data to be for other people to be able to search. I hope you guys don't. Right, so I'm gonna show you a way securely, securely, is that the right? Yeah, <laughs> okay, this is the keyword here, do it securely. So any kind of contract, okay, that you can uh, use AI with and get all the relevant information, do that securely and be able to pull the information you want. Cause you might have like a uh, listing agreement or a sales contract of some sort that you guys wrote maybe a year ago or two years ago, but you have no idea how that transaction came about. Maybe you want to use it as a case study and pull out all the relevant information and then create a case study email, of how you won that deal and how those numbers shake shakes out. This would be a, uh, a exercise to help you be able to do that. Okay. And Number eight, if we have time, here's some bonuses. I'm gonna show you how to create Instagram stories for the next 30 days using AI. And I'm gonna show you a tool that's an all-in-one so that you don't have to go search for 10 different tools to do uh, 10 different things, okay? There's an all-in-one tool that you can use for all of that stuff. So you can go to one place and do all your chatting, do all your marketing and all that kind of stuff in one tool. And if we have even more time, uh, where do I find all the best AI tools? Okay, so we're gonna cap that off. So 
you know, with number one, meaning like, hey, where do you guys all get your news? And then where do you get the best tools without having to sift through? The last count that I had was, I think, roughly around 23, 2400 AI tools that's out there right now, and it's growing every day. So I don't think you guys want to go through 2300 tools and not knowing whether it's in beta, whether it is, uh, you know, works or doesn't work. You want, you know, you want to use crowdsource to, to allow you to find out like, hey, what are the most popular useful tools that I can use for different things? Okay, so that's kind of the quick rundown. Is that cool with everyone? Uh, give me a one if we're ready to go. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, guys. All right. Great. Super great. Uh, before I start, though, do you guys have any, like, AI questions at all? You guys, uh, some of you are here. Uh, some of you are here because you have questions, maybe. Or you just want to sit back and let me uh, show you all the stuff. Any questions that you are just dying to know before I get started? <laughs> Marcel, I think you might. Andy, go ahead. Sure. So one thing that um, I'm seeing more and more of is people using AI to make phone calls, to do prospecting for them. Um, can you speak to that at all? I can. Um, there are tools right now the one of the goals of some of the uh, uh, AI uh, companies are to be able to have AI give responses very fast. Uh, you know this when you're in a conversation, we think in our brain very quickly and we can respond in a conversation very quickly. Well, up until this point, most of the AI uh, models have been very slow. You notice that in, if in the beginning, if it was uh, ChatGPT 4.0 came out for ChatGPT 4 came out, when you typed in something, you literally watch it type out line by line. It's just too slow for conversational use, okay? But now there are other tools that are extremely fast and specifically targeted for conversations, okay? And I'll show you this one here. It's called Grok. Grok, oops. It's G-R-O-Q, okay? And this, this tool here is like ChatGPT, but be able to respond extremely fast. So let's do a question here. So Andy, like, give, me a, give me a question that, let's say, uh, write me a book about uh, real estate negotiation in 2000 words. Okay, so watch it here. And if I hit enter, I want you to see the, the speed and response here. Okay. You see, it already wrote, wrote the entire thing. That's not even a second. Mm. Okay. So this specifically is what we would call a language model, specifically only for language purposes. And you can see the time frame here, 1.245. Uh, what is that? time per second. I don't even know what that means exactly, but here's all the stats around it. Okay, tokens per second, all right? 1360 tokens per second. Okay, so there is a mad dash to how fast AI can uh, respond. The faster it can respond, the faster it can start having a real conversation with you, sometimes even uh, interrupt you. Okay, so this is fast becoming a reality. Okay, so uh, so 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 you you know pretty soon, um, and some companies are already using this model to be able to have conversations, uh, making phone calls and stuff like that. Okay, so does that help a little bit, Andy, to kind of understand, like where we are at? Yeah, definitely as far as speed goes, especially as, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Even right now, even right now, when you're a support, some sort of support AI chat. When you type in the question, you can see like, oh, it's thinking dot, 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 dot. In the very near future, that probably would never happen again. It would just like, in an instant, it would respond faster than any human. Okay, but because of that, 
when it can re respond fast, it can also spend more time thinking and give you more accurate and better answers with that time. Hmm. Okay, so that's the additional bonus part. Okay, cool. Uh, feel free to play around with this uh, because it's extremely, extremely fast. I can't even, you know, uh, you literally blink and this whole thing was done. Okay, let's say do it again, but this time expand to 4,000 words. And we are done. <laughs> okay, all right. Good question, Andy. Uh, anybody else? Questions before we start? I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead, please. Um, I'm just curious, like when you're asking it to, to write 2,000 words or 4,000 words, mm -hmm. does it write the same words for everybody who asks or just like unique words? Oh, really good question. So uh, these AI models are uh, like individuals, like think of them as people. So if you ask one friend the same question, they'll give you an answer, right? And if you ask another friend, it'll give you a different answer, okay? So if I ask this again, do, uh, so do it again, but uh, with, with more intelligence, okay? So now it's going to write it. Now this next one, this is going to be different than the first time. Okay, because I told it to do a little bit different. But uh, one of the things about AI is it's a, think of it as, I hate to say this, but think of it as a human. If you ask the human the same questions twice, you get two different answers. If you ask it a thousand times, you might get a thousand different answers because it's thinking about it on the fly. Okay, so if you ask a question and somebody else asks a question, okay, you're gonna get different answers because it's generating new answers every time you ask, okay? Okay, it, so in other words, there's never no plagiarism involved, basically. That's right. So uh, that's one of the big big ideas that big things that people worry about. Oh, is there plagiarism and stuff like that? Well, it's already trained on all the data that's uh, been talked about that, that all of the internet data has already been trained on all that stuff. So you have to think about it. All human uh, knowledge come from other humans. <laughs> so that's the same way that AI works. All of the information come from other information that humans have given it. Okay. And it's just so much. There's, you know, trillions of data points. And so you're going to get different stuff in a mixture of all that stuff. Okay. Is that, is that, is that helpful in your second question there? Yes, and does that say grok or grog? It's a grok with a Q. Okay. Yeah, and it's free. All this stuff is free, so um, it's fun to kind of check it out. And you can see down here, it says LPU, meaning it's a language processing unit, or lens, uh, uh, it uses language. It's specifically specialized in language. Okay, all right, let's start. Uh, where do we get our AI news from? So there's this tool called futuretools.io, uh, I almost said .com. And if you go to the news section, this is all the latest news. Basically, almost as things are released, it will be here. Okay, easy to scan through, right? You can see all the different dates. And all, uh, it's slightly curated to the most important. We don't want a whole bunch of news that's not important, not relevant. So you can see all the major news are all here, okay? It's easy to scan if you, if you are looking for a specific type of news for a specific company. I can just search the page and say Google. And so there's 14 things that mention Google. So now we can see what Google's up to, okay? We can also do, say, Apple. And then now we can see the articles about Apple or you can do a Microsoft. And then you'll see all the articles about Microsoft. Okay. This wasn't, somebody is not deciding what should be on here or not, not be on here. Okay. But they're just seeing like, hey, what are the major news outlets? And they're putting it out here. Okay. So this is the fastest way to do that. Okay. So this is called futuretools.io news. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it here.
And I'm going to give you all of this stuff here so you guys don't have to uh, write everything down. So I'm going to give you this. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to give you all this stuff here, all right? So that will help you guys not have to like, oh my God, what was this link or what was that link? Okay, so that's number one, right? Hopefully that's helpful because uh, if I don't want to go to some uh, political opinion news or anything like that, I just want the real thing, all right? Number two. What's the latest in ChatGPT? Um, have you guys all heard of the latest ChatGPT? It's called GPT-40 Mini. Give me a one if you heard of it, zero if you haven't in the chat. Great, Mandy. Stan, all right, so half of you. A little less than half of you, <laughs> zero, zero. <laughs> all right, <laughs> awesome. Yes, so... Uh, this is the same idea that Andy had mentioned earlier about speed. This is really about speed, okay? Um, how can we make the fastest AI, okay, but also just as intelligent, okay? So one of the things I want to share with you guys here is this chart right here. This, If you got nothing out of this one article here, this is all you need to know, okay? You see in pink are all ChatGPT 4.0, which is the latest, you know, only been out for, I think, a couple months. Okay, you can see how it scored on all of these different factors. And don't ask me about all these different factors but I don't, because I don't know all of them. Okay, but these are all the different intelligence uh, tests that they give it. You can see uh, ChatGPT 4.0 and pink are pretty much the highest on almost all of these tests. Okay, so now let's compare that to ChatGPT 4.0 Mini, which just came out. It's going to be much, much faster and much, much cheaper. And I'll talk about the, the pricing on that. Okay, so it's the orange right here. You see it's still higher than all the other models. And it's second to ChatGPT 4.0. Okay, so it's almost, it's smarter than everything else except ChatGPT 4.0. But I'm going to show you how much faster it can run. Okay, so here it's comparable, still better than everything else. It's second on pretty much all the tests. Okay, except maybe this one here, which is very close. Uh, Gemini Flash is just slightly faster from Google. Okay, so now we know how it performs. All right, so we know it performs well, meaning it's intelligent. Okay, so a new model that doesn't need the trillions of data points but it's just as smart, almost just as smart. Okay, now for all of us, we don't need it to be, we don't need to talk to the smartest person in the world all the time. We just need to talk to people who are smarter than us. Okay, that can do 99% of the things that we wanted to do, which ChatGPT 4.0 Mini would do. So if you want to use the smartest version, you, you would have to be, you know, a, AI engineer or a computer science engineer that's doing some, you know, highly technical papers and stuff like that, then in those cases, you would use ChatGPT 4.0. But for most of us, ChatGPT 4.0 mini will do probably nine, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably 99.8% of the things we want to do. Okay. So if you guys are wondering, uh, what model you should use, I would say ChatGPT 4.0 Mini is probably the best for right now, okay, for our, for our purposes. Andy, you had a question? Are there any other benefits other than speed? Like, is there, like, when you see something that's, like, the latest, whatever, the latest version, is there, is the data any different? Are there any benefits specific to certain industries or anything like that? Or are we just always talking about the fastest, like, what well, there's no, about? yeah, so this chart here is on intelligence. Right. Okay. So we know is smarter than all of us, <laughs> probably put together, and um, almost as smart as ChatGPT 4.0. So uh, we want to make sure that we can get good answers, right answers, intelligent answers back. And this shows that it can. Okay. That's number one benefit. Okay. We are not doing anything super scientific or anything like that or have uh, extremely large data set to sift through. So we don't need the smartest, you know, version here. Okay, we're doing like general easy marketing stuff. So that's number one on intelligence. Number two, the speed, okay? The speed is, uh, I forget what it said, but it's much faster. It is, let me go here, speed. Okay. 
okay, I don't, I couldn't search for speed, but it's much, much faster because it's smaller. Okay. And then that's number two benefit is the speed. And number three is the pricing. Okay. So over the past year, you know, every single time that you ask it a question, it costs money to compute that stuff. Okay. And so over the past year, all the way down to ChatGPT 4.0, it's gotten down to 50 cents per 1 million input tokens. Okay. That is about <clears throat> one-tenth of the price that it used to cost one year ago. Okay. So that means we can do more. We can ask it more. We can run automations so that it can do repeated uh, queries all the time for one tenth of the cost with ChatGPT 4.0 mini. Okay, so that's the third thing. Number one, intelligence. Number two, much faster. Number three, it costs much less. That will translate to you guys when you start when you guys start using AI tools, other AI tools that those companies using ChatGPT has to pay for for all the compute. It will be cheaper on your end, they can charge less per month for the tool that they're offering you. So those are the three things to understand about this. Does that help with the, with your question, Andy? Okay, so my recommendation is just use ChatGPT 4.0 mini for everything. There is no reason to use ChatGPT 4.0 and wait for responses. Okay, so wanna introduce that to you guys. Super good, let me move on. Okay. Let's get tactical here. How do I write my e weekly real estate market update emails fast? Okay, so I'm going to show you a sample of my real estate email that I've written before. This was, uh, I just pulled up an older sample here, but it's the same for all the ones that I do. Okay, so this is here in Orange County here in California. Okay, and I called it One Minute Real Estate. And uh, as you can see, here's just a little bit of description. Okay, and here's a little call to action. And right here we have mortgage rates. And then right here we have trending average prices for our area. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Okay, here's my signature. And then click here to see what's on the market, which just, if I click on it, takes me to my website uh, with all the latest listings. Okay, so that's my email. You guys can uh, feel free to uh, copy it if you want, but this is how I structure my email. And this, uh, this structure originally was adopted from uh, one of Sharon's uh, email updates. So if you don't have the structure, then uh, feel free to copy it. Uh, in fact, what I can do is I will give you let me make a screenshot for you and then I will just stick it in the chat here for you. Do you guys all want a template of this? Just give me a one if you want a template of this that you can send to people. Okay, I just wanna make sure you guys want it. All right, so I don't spend a whole bunch of time. All right, so here is, all right, so I made two screenshots so that it can fit. So you guys can download that and just grab it and then just make your own. Okay, all right, so this is my email. This, uh, I'm gonna go to ChatGPT and I'm gonna create a new one. And so what I've done here is I downloaded a PDF from our market of all of the, um, the market stats, okay? And so right here, this is the site for our MLS. And if I click here, uh, I save, save this here. And then if I open this up, oops. Sorry, it's not what I want. Let me pull up these market stats for you. Okay, so this is our market stats. You can see all of these numbers. I don't know about you, but I would rather not sift through all these numbers, figure out what numbers I want, adding and subtracting to be able to put those numbers in here. <laughs> so instead I use ChatGPT and I uploaded the PDF uh, okay, so let's see. I uploaded that PDF right 
Here's the PDF. I uploaded that PDF to ChatGPT and I said, write an email using the below format with the attached file as numbers to update my email with the latest number from June, 2024. Okay, and then I just pasted my email in here so that it has a example of what I want. And so what it did is it came back and it wrote the email. Hey, I hope you're doing well. Here's the latest update in real estate market in our area. If you know anyone who might find this information helpful, please feel free to forward this email. If this was forwarded to you and you would like to be added to the email list, just reply to this message. Okay, so now it create, it wrote this email based on the information I gave it. This PDF here, it went through all of this and it created this email with these kind these stats right here. Okay, so that's how we get the market stats here. And uh, I asked it to uh, update the numbers. And so it did, here's all the numbers. Okay, so that's how you can shortcut everything to go in there. Could you also upload a website page that has stats in lieu of the PDF? You can. Okay, Mandy, I'm actually going to show you how I do that next. Thank you. That's a great question. All right. So that's how I get this part here for the market snapshot derived from these numbers. Okay. So now all I have to do is copy and paste the section, put it into my email, and that's my latest. Okay. Next, I want all of these numbers for the mortgage rates. Okay, what are the rates for 30 year, 15 year, 30 year, 15 year? And you, you can see here, I did it in this format. Okay, daily change, low, all that kind of stuff. So I get all of my numbers from here. This is a site called uh, Mortgage News Daily. And once you pull up today's rates, these are all today's rates. And what's cool about this is that it can calculate loan uh, mortgage amount based on the rates. Right here, you can see 30-year fixed, 6.87%. It's down 0.02% this week, right? And your monthly payment is 45.96 based on a $700,000 loan amount. So I can put whatever number I want here, 500,000. And now it recalculates the monthly payment. Okay. I'm going to put it back to 700 because that's what I asked for before as a benchmark. So depending on your market area, you may have a different um, uh, average uh, home price. Okay. So now I have all this information. I open up this, uh, this plugin here called Harpa AI, which also uses, you can see uses ChatGPT 4.0 and I say ChatGPT 4.0 mini. And then I can ask it questions based on this page. You see down here, the page is clicked. That means I am asking it to read everything on this page so that I can ask it question depending on this page. All right, so that was, Mandy, that was your question. Is like, hey, how can I ask it questions based on the page? So this is a page. Uh, what you want to do is you want to uh, uh, install this tool called Harpa, H-A-R-P-A. ARPA AI, and it's a Chrome extension. And then uh, you can start asking a question. So I asked it a question, say, hey, rewrite this email using the data on this page and, and uh, format it the same way as I did it right here. Okay, I hit enter. And here it wrote it for me based on these numbers. Now all I have to do is copy and uh, paste this into my new email with all the new numbers. Okay. Uh, Mandy, was that helpful? Is that good? Okay. Now there is a different way that you can do this, Mandy, is if I took a screenshot of this and I went to chat GPT and then I, dragged it into ChatGPT and then I uploaded it. And I say, give me a summary of 
all the rates today. I'll say mortgage rates. And write a email to my real estate investor clients about rate changes. Okay. So it's going to take the screenshot. It's going to read through all of it. And here we go. It wrote an email on it. So now I can take this, I can just copy and paste and put it into my email. Here's actually, it continue writing an email right here. Subject, mortgage rates, clients. And then here's the rates and here's the trend. So there's your entire email based on real time data right now. Okay, so that's the second way that you can do that is just take a screenshot and just upload it to ChatGPT. All right, good so far. All right, we're uh, running slightly short on time, so I'm gonna move a little faster, but um, hope you guys are getting really good stuff out of this. So we did mortgage rates. Uh, how do I do deal of the week emails? I know you, many of you said that you guys do deal of the week. What's the name of the Chrome extension? It's called Harpa, so it's called A-H-A-R, so I'm gonna do it here for you. Harpa AI. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to put it into Chrome plug in Chrome AI plugin. It's a really cool tool. It actually does a lot of other stuff too. So I'll put it in here for you guys. I'm going to copy and paste this for you at the end and you guys can have everything. All right. So ChatGPT, I'm going to just copy this link here for you for reference. And then, okay, good. A mortgage rates, here is the site I use for up-to-date mortgage rates. So I'll put that here. All right, how do I do deal of the week emails? All right, so here is my website. This is built on Lofty. And uh, this is one of my nice uh, $8 million listings that we sold that we really turned out really well. Um, and here's our, our listing with IDX. If you guys are using Lofty and you guys have a website, um, then uh, you would have all of this stuff uh, granted that you had designed it. So we designed a lot of these websites for our agents. So if you're interested uh, in getting something like that done and you use Lofty as a CRM, then uh, please feel free to reach out to me and uh, just uh, find me on Workplace and uh, and uh, send me a DM. Okay, so this is my site and I pull up some listings here. So here's a bunch of listings in my area and I just happened to pick like the top one here. Okay, so 8.499 million here in Newport Coast, California. And then here's my listing, right? With all the details. So here again, I used Harpa, I pulled it up and I say, hey, write me an email featuring this home. As easy as that. How many words is that? One, two, three, four, five, six word. The six word prompt, prompt. Write an email featuring this home. And it began writing the email. Subject, discover luxury living at Seven Cottonwood, Newport Coast. All right, and here's all the details it wrote. Now, if you guys have been doing uh, deal of the week emails, you know like, hey, we should probably not show the address we probably should not show the MLS numbers and things like that so that people can reach back out to you to get all the details from you. That's the whole purpose of the email is for people to reach back out to you. Okay. All right. So let me uh, put this prompt in here so that you guys can try it out yourself. Prompt. Oops. Let's see. Let me make sure I can paste it properly here. All right, here's the prompt. Okay, and then, oops, what happened here? Here. Uh, Harpa, here we go. Where is, uh, here we go, right here. Okay, so here's my email. 
would you guys would you guys like this template also for the uh deal of the week email i assume you do <laughs> <laughs> All right. So because I don't want some of these private information, I asked it to not include any private information. So I said, write it again, but do not include any MLS numbers or address or anything confidential. So it rewrote this email. So I'm going to copy this email here for you. Okay. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it down here. Well, wow, that's a little messy. I will put it in a separate doc and I will put it, give you guys a link. How about that? Give me a, be patient with me here because I really want to give you guys this stuff. So say copy, paste. Okay, here's the email. And I'll say, deal of the week templates all right and i'm gonna say share i'm gonna say anyone i'm gonna say copy and i'm gonna put the link in here and i'm gonna also put the link right here all right here you go all right so there you go there's your template and now it's stripped out all the confidential uh, stuff. And now this email is ready to go. Good. Is this helpful to you guys? Can you guys give me a five in the chat if this is good? Helpful so far that you guys can execute on this and just gonna be able to take it and use it. Super great. Thank you guys. Thank you, Stan. All right, good. So that takes care of number six. All right, let's go through this one. We have 10 minutes. I think we can get through some of these bonuses too. All right, so how do I search contract documents securely? If you remember in the beginning, I mentioned to you, we, by the way, you guys know that like we're the one of few professions who write legal contracts without actually being a lawyer. <laughs> You, you think about that, like all we had to do is pass some tests and then we can be like basically write contracts like a lawyer. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> some states, of course, uh, you know, you have to go through a lawyer to actually, you know, buy a property, which some of the states you guys are in probably are that. But uh, so because of that, you know, we're very liable to stuff. So we have to be sure that we can um, sift through uh, information properly and be able to use it and be able to kind of uh, get the information we want if our clients ask us, hey, hey, does, this, uh, does my contract say this or that or the other? You can have a way to be able to have AI help you sift out the information, maybe even specific words or specific terms or specific pricing or specific addendum and stuff like that. Like that takes a ton of time. If you had to scroll through 30 pages or 50 pages, like God forbid, um, like it would take you a long time. This is where all our time is getting eaten up. I, I don't know about you. I'd rather be out prospecting and getting new clients than trying to find some you know information out of a contract. Okay, so this is how I do it. This is a tool here called Humata. Okay, and I'm going to put the link also in the chat here. Let's see, Humata AI. Right, again, a free tool. I'm going to put this link in our doc for you guys. There you go. All right. And what this tool does, it works just like ChatGPT, but you can upload. You can upload documents here. You can see uh, in my free account it found this document that I previously uploaded and I can upload multiple documents here to ask it questions about. So what I did here, just what I had on hand, a lease agreement that was uploaded. Okay, here's my lease agreement. You can see all the different pages with all the terms and all the stuff in here. Okay, 
And I started asking questions about it. I said, hey, tell me the, all the terms in bullet points. And here's all the different terms of the contract. Plus, it gave me references as links. So if I click on this link, it would take me to the key safe lock lockbox addendum. You see? And it would highlight it for me where, where it was. Okay, and you can see all the different links to all the different pages that it found references to based on its response. Okay, and then I said next, hey, give me all the relevant lease information. And by the way, you can see I misspelled it, but it knows what I mean. Okay, and so it gave me all the references that's more relevant. Okay, and it showed me which pages. Does ChatGPT have this? Uh, yes, Ryan, ChatGPT has this capability, but what we don't want to do is we don't want to upload all of this sensitive client information into ChatGPT that becomes public data that they use to train their AI. That's the key here, is to be able to do this securely. Remember what I said? Okay, how do I search contract documents securely? This is the key point that I'm trying to make here about this tool is to be able to do this securely, okay? And if you wanted to see, uh, if we go back here, uh, security, okay? So it has to adhere to all these security certificates and security standards to make sure it's fully encrypted, compliant, okay? So that it's not using your document, your contracts for other purposes. Yes, it's free, Harris, that's, that's correct. Okay, so you can see, let's continue our journey here. Give me all the relevant lease timeframes. So now it's starting to give me details about timeframes. And then I asked it again, what are all the costs monthly? So now it gave me the breakdowns of all the costs, key deposits, rental fees, storage fees, base rent amount for the year. It actually calculated this for me, even though the, uh, the rent was $3,800 a month, it added it for 12 months and it gave me the total. Okay, utilities, what the utilities are for the tenants. Okay, and then I asked again, who are all the parties involved? And it gave me all the different parties and it described them, but it didn't give me the names. So I said, hey, what are their names? So now it gave me all the names of the parties. Okay. And then I wanted to know what their roles are for each name because it does me no good to know their names, but don't know if they're tenants, landlords, or agents. So now it told me, this is a tenant, this is a tenant, this is a landlord, this is a landlord, and I am the agent. Okay. What are all the disclosures included? Here are all the different disclosures per our state that's included. Okay, are there any un unsigned pages? Okay, so now it's looking through all the stuff, but it's told me, no, there are no unsigned pages. All relevant pages have been signed. How many times have you guys had to look through 30 pages of trying to figure out, hey, did every single page get signed? Did I miss any signatures? This did all of that for you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to take a quick pause here. Um, I Can I get some uh, thought feedback from this? Is this helpful? Is this something that you guys can uh, uh, readily use right now if you had to search through a whole bunch of documents, a whole bunch of contracts? So feel free to unmute. Just give me uh, any kind of input. Thank you, Amber. Good. All right, so... That was our number seven. So we just got in there barely in time. I've got three minutes. Would you guys like me to stop or you guys want to know more about the bonuses I have here? <laughs> I have three minutes. Literally have one minute for each. Bonus. All right. Great. All right. Um, would you like to see how we created inst uh, Instagram stories for 30 days? That That AI can actually just produce all that for us. Yes. Okay. So here we go. I went to ChatGPT Mini. Okay. 
And I say generate weekly Instagram story calendar in a table format. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys this prompt so that you guys can try it out. I'll put it right in here. And I'll say prompt. There's your prompt. All right. And when I did that, and I told it to do it for real estate in the specific city in Laguna Beach, California, I'm a real estate agent. And my target audience is 30 to 60 years old that lives in Orange County, California. Okay, so here you go. Here is a weekly Instagram story calendar, and it wrote all the different topics and the focus and all that stuff that I could write about. Okay, so it did it for seven days. So I said, hey, that's not good enough. I need you to give me a 30 days worth. So it did. Day one, day two, day three, all the way to 30. Now, all I have to do next is just copy this table. And in fact, I can do that. I can copy this table. And I can just put it into a sheet. This should be okay. Let's see here, sheet. Paste. And there is my calendar for everything I need to create and even create the hooks for your stories and instructions, story ideas, all around real estate for 30 days. Okay, so that's bonus number one. Bonus number two, an all-in-one tool. This tool is called Easy Peasy. Great name, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to take this link and I'm going to put it in a document for you guys. Easy peasy dot AI. All right, and this tool, uh, where did it go? Can do all of these things all in one place. You can chat with it just like ChatGPT. You can type to it and it can do speech and can, it can say it back. It can do images. Uh, it has a bot that you can actually train your, on your own data. Um, you can do create articles. You can create marketing content. You can uh, create transcriptions from uh, say a meeting that you had. Uh, you can do interior design AI generator. So you can upload. Uh, I don't have a login right now, but you can upload a photo and you can have it redesign, do interior design for you and then give you some ideas. Okay. And uh, you can use the PDF thing like we did here with Humata. You can upload a PDF. Okay. But this here is not as secure as Humata, I would say. Okay, so I would use Humata instead, but you can, you know, if it's something that's not sensitive, you can put it in here and you can chat with it, you can get information, you can rebuild it, all that kind of stuff. And then you can use it to create your own brand voice for your business. Okay, so that's easy peasy. I'm one minute over, but I want to give you this last one so that I can really round this out. Where do I find all the best AI tools? And that's when we talked about it before, futuretools.ai. And if you go down here and you click Matt's picks, then here are 164 out of 2830 tools that have been uh, vetted and curated and know that they work well that you can try. Okay, so 164 is better than 2830. Uh, Ryan had a question. Do you anticipate Leo involving into a more useful AI with some of the abilities top of AI? Definitely. Um, as as the AI industry continues to evolve, then Leo is just gonna get better and better, okay? And be able to do more, okay? Uh, the hardest part with Leo was getting it started and getting it input and getting the data. And so uh, Real Broker has already done that. Uh, they have done a great job here uh, getting that started. We are, I believe the only brokerage that has an AI like this, okay? Brokerage wide, okay? So, uh, so I think, uh, the answer is that, yes, it will definitely start to have more and more capabilities as we go. Stuff is moving very quickly. A lot of these things I'm showing you, it couldn't really do very well six months ago, and now it's doing very, very well. Okay. Rose asked, hey, 
Real family, we should definitely support each other on social media following. Okay, <laughs> Rose, that's fine. Uh, you know, feel free to connect. Uh, feel free to connect with me as well. Um, so I have all of you guys' uh, registrations here that came in on Zoom. Um, if you're watching this on a replay, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm on um, all the social media at Leo Chen RE. So you can DM me there if you want this document and you, if you didn't get it, but if you registered into Real Academy, I'm gonna just uh, send this, this link of this document to you guys. Um, and then you guys will have it. So I'm gonna email you with everything. And um, that way you'll have it. Let me do my last part here and get this rounded out. And here is your link for that. All right. Super great. I'm uh, four minutes over time. Thank you all. Um, I'm, I'm happy to stay around for a couple more minutes if you guys have questions and you guys want to ask. Okay, feel free to unmute if you have questions. Going once, going twice. All right. I will see you guys next time. And uh, feel free to reach out to me on uh, Workplace if uh, anything comes up tech-related that you guys... Uh, want help with. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for being here.